this is David. Today we're talking about Azure SQL databases. Azure SQL databases are built on top of Microsoft SQL Server and contain almost all of the features of an on-premise installation of SQL Server. However, they abstract away the server itself and the underlying machine and virtual machine, making it simpler to create database objects and manipulate those objects and work with those objects. I've navigated to the Azure portal, and to create a new Azure SQL database, I will click Create a Resource. Now, I do have to create a, uh, a SQL Server first, and I usually like to start with that explicitly, although you can do the same steps at the same time. So in the search button here, I'll type in SQL Server, and I will select SQL Server Logical Server, Create. And in here, I'll give it a name. I'll call it DG Test SQL Server. This has to be unique among Azure SQL servers because ultimately you're going to have a public facing URL, DG Test SQL Server database Windows net, and that must be unique. I'll give a, a login name. I'll use my name, DGIARD, and a password. You can see the rules on the right here telling you what the rules are for this password, and as I satisfy those rules, the red X's will turn to green checks. I'll have to confirm that password. And I'll create a resource group. A resource group is just a way of organizing together related assets inside of Azure so that you can manage them together. I'll call this new resource group DG Test RG. And then I can specify a location. You've got lots of options for this where to place this, I'll put it in East US, which is fine. You want to think about where are your users going to be, where are the applications that will consume this data, you want to minimize the latency, there may be some legal requirements about where you can store this data as well. Now this will take a few minutes, so I'll pause the video here and come back when this SQL Server is finished. Now that Azure has completed deploying our SQL Server, we can view it. And the simple way to do that is just go to Resource Group and select this resource group that I've created. And in here we see our SQL Server and information about it here. Um, now, what I really want to do is I want to create a new database on this SQL Server. The way that I do that is I select Create a Resource, Databases, SQL Database. That will bring up this dialog, or blade, which allows me to enter properties of the database that I want to create. One thing I want to do is to give it a name. I'll call it DG Test DB. I'll specify a resource group, and I could create a new one, but I'll use the same resource group that I created in where my, my database is. And then I select the type of database I want to create, and my options are an empty database, a database with some sample data. So for example, if I wanted to um, uh, learn about SQL Server or I wanted to have some test data that I could build my application against, I could use that. Or a database that's restored from a backup. I'll select the blank database. And for the server, I'll use the server that I just created right here. Now I could create a new one from here, but I'll stick with the one that I created just a few minutes ago. And then I want to specify a pricing tier. Click on this. And there are three broad categories of pricing tier, basic, standard, and premium. And each one is more powerful. And even within each one, you can specify uh, DTUs. DTUs are just a measure of processing speed and um, memory, uh, things like that, that you'll get more as you go for it. And each one has a maximum data size. So for example, the basic one, you can only have a two gigabyte database. Uh, standard is up to 250 and premium is up to a terabyte of data. And you can bring that down if you want to lower your cost. So I'll just take the standard one here and apply that. And I can specify a collation as well. I'll just take the default for that and click on Create. And this will create a new database called DGTestDB. And it'll deploy it to this DGTest SQL Server server. This will not take as long as creating the server, but it'll still take a couple of minutes. So again, I will pause the video at this point. Now that we've created our database, we can take a look at it. Under notifications, we'll see it right here. I can click on Go to Resource. 
and here it is. And some important things to look at are the connection strings. This is how we actually get to the database. And I'm comfortable showing this to you because my password and username have been obfuscated in this. Um, and it's available for ADO.NET, JDBC, ODBC, or PHP, whichever one of these uh, connection technologies that you want to use. If I go under overview, I'll see some information about the resource group with the location. Some of this I can change. Some of it is read-only. I cannot change it. And you'll see options down here to turn on things like auditing and alerts and diagnostics, locking, and so on. Information that you can use just by setting properties. You can pretty quickly set up geo-replication, for example or come in here and design your queries. And here in the quick start, um, if you want to download some tools, for example, the SQL Server Management Studio, there's a uh, free version of that's available to manage this. You can also manage it from Visual Studio. You can go up to this cloud shell and do a command line straight from within your browser. You can do a command line locally with Microsoft PowerShell and so on. And then there's information here like help files. To, or articles to show you how to work with Azure SQL databases. In this video, I've shown you how to create a new Azure SQL Server and an Azure SQL database on that server. This is David. Thank you for watching.